substitute, and I must admit that uh, I lost my telephone. It had all my information in it, and when I got here, and I don't blame him for leaving, it's Brother Graves, Arthur Graves. I asked him what my topic was, and did he get my lesson? <laughs> And I told him I thought you were my good friend. <laughs> but uh, my topic was taken. I know where the text was. The text was uh, in uh, Acts chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 3. And to be somewhat close to what the title was, uh, it had to do with the church's uh, responsibility toward minorities. Most of us know what a minority is. Amen. Before we get into this, I would like to thank, uh, appreciate the brothers who put this together. But a minority is the smallest in number of two groups constituting the whole. A group having less than the number of votes necessary for control. In our case, since we don't vote in the Lord's church, it would probably be that group that has less of an influence to get things done. Need not necessarily be the smaller in number could be the smaller in influence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A part of a population differing from others in some characteristics and often subjected to deferential treatment. Mm -hmm. So most of us can identify with these facets in the Lord's church. Yes. And what should be the responsibility of the church toward these individuals. That's basically the concept that I'm dealing with, the idea. And in the text, Acts chapter 6, in those days, the number of the disciples were multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected yes, in the daily menstruation. Right. And the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Mm. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you several, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. The saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose, and the name of the seven who were chosen are given here. That's our lesson text. Uh, the Grecian widows, the Grecians were not Greek. Uh, they were not uh, a foreign nation, but they are Hellenistic, Hell, Hellen, Hellenistic Jews who allowed Greek culture and language to influence yes, their lives. Yes, For some reason, we are not told why, these widows were not receiving the same care as other widows. The Bible does not, perhaps it might infer, but it does not say that they were being mistreated by the larger class or those who were giving out the uh, distribution. You know, uh, the early church made a uh, calculation that they would distribute their goods 
they laid at the apostles' feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they were distributed to everyone as they had need. We are to be cautious not to impute nefarious conduct on the part of those who were making the distribution. We don't know what the cause was of their being neglected in the administration. The Bible does not impute any wrongdoing. It's just that they were neglected. And a lot of time, the church, those of us in leadership in the Lord's church, neglect other members of the church. We sometimes forget that we are all one body. And our responsibilities extend to every member of the church, from the greatest to the least. It seemed like that they have begun to, 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 to disavow or to disobey this commandment that Jesus said that uh, there should not be any great among you. And you know the, 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 the results that came about because, and I don't think the uh, Holy Spirit put this in the record, that we might have a record that they were neglecting certain people, but I think the lesson is that we ought to look at how they solved the problem. The solution to the problem, I think, is what the Holy Spirit would like for us to keep in mind. The gracious nature of the early church is seen in its diligence and willingness to correct this irritation that has come up, this neglect. This graciousness can be seen in that all seven men who are chosen have Greek names. <laughs> How many of us would do that? Uh, uh, as leaders in the Lord's church, and how many have the confidence in the church that they would select individuals from the neglected class or at least have the identity of who they are? Look at it, look at it in terms of black and white. Right. I was an elder for four years in a uh, mixed congregation, predominantly white. And I'm no longer an elder in that congregation for the simple reason. Like the man said, did I do that? Oh, it's 12. I was telling about my personal experience as an elder in the Lord's church. We had a problem that came that, that arose in the group uh, that involved about 30 members out of 260 or so. And uh, two elders left, one had died, one had moved away. We had two ministers on staff, three. And uh, we had the elders both of us elders had gotten together and decided how the, the church was going to proceed in this matter. And we had indeed uh, begun the process of, 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 of carrying out that agreement that we had. And then we had a meeting, uh, the elders. And then after that meeting, one Saturday morning, uh, we had a meeting about 11 o'clock, 10.30. And we had come to a conclusion, and I had gone away, come back home. But the ministerial staff and, and one of the other elders had decided to go to lunch together. And I wasn't invited. 
they made a decision, and about 2 o'clock, they called me and said, this is how we're going to do it. And I said, no, we have agreed as to how we're going to do it. Yes, but we had a meeting with them and all of this, and, and you're going to have to defer to me on this. <laughs> but what the problem that I'm, bring, I'm bringing up that to show that there is a way to handle matters of disagreement in the group. And it's not through dictatorship on the part of anyone or any small group of folk in order that you might get your design. That's how we, and, and I believe the Holy Spirit has this in here to show us how to handle these, this matter. They chose seven men full of the Holy Ghost, and all seven of the men they chose, and, and, and full of honest report, were of the class of those who were being neglected. Am I making myself clear? And the thing pleased the whole church. <laughs> That's what we got to do is please the whole church. Now, I'm going to deviate from the, this aspect of the subject, and I'm going to talk about one of those who were chosen. The, the, this, uh, the record gives us an account of two of those men, those seven, Stephen and Philip, uh, who were chosen. And they were full of the Holy Spirit, remember that. But Philip, in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, were called upon to go to a minority, yeah. the Samaritans, mm -hmm. and he did an excellent job. Yeah. And not only did he work among the Samaritans, but he worked with a, an Ethiopian eunuch, we are told. Yeah. Now, 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 this is an interesting story, the Ethiopian eunuch. And, and you better get your Bibles ready uh, to, carry, to go with me on this. Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, the Bible said, had gone from uh, to Jerusalem to worship. And, you know, if you stop and think about it, why would this man go to Jerusalem to worship even if he lived in Israel? This was the last person you would expect to go to Jerusalem to worship. A eunuch. What's a eunuch? Right. Eunuch is a man who has, is not able to consummate with a woman. Right. And there are three types that we are given in Matthew chapter 19. Jesus gave when teaching about marriage. Right. There was some eunuchs who were born. Yeah. And there are some eunuchs Oh, I'm supposed to stay here. Well, he don't want, he doesn't want mine anyway. <laughs> and and some eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men. Yeah. And some eunuchs who became eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. All right, all right, all right. Come on. They weren't able to 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 com consummate with women because of their past experience in their own life. But the unit that we're talking about is of the second class. A man who was made a unit by men. And he had no business worshiping in the first place, let alone going to a thousand miles to worship. This was the kind of situation that the Holy Spirit put Philip in. <laughs> well, some of y'all might be doubting me, but in, 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 in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse number 1, the Bible says he that has, has been wounded in a stone or had his private member cut off, could not stand in the congregation of Israel. Come on, come on. And here we got a eunuch going thousands of miles by chariot 
to worship. In Leviticus chapter 22 and verse number 24, the Bible talks about uh, don't bring before the Lord anything that had been bruised, broken, cut. Huh? But here we have a man in that condition seeking to go before the Lord. And this is the kind of individual that the Holy Spirit had this man that was selected by the church in Acts 6 to go and see. And he went down there and he saw this man reading from the prophet Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. And the Bible said he began at that same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And you know, it's, 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 it's interesting to me as to what that, un, what that what Philip had to say to this eunuch. Uh, no doubt when he began at Isaiah 53 and began to preach to him, they might have gotten over to Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 3. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 and verse 3, and if he read to this eunuch that your maker is your husband, his name is the Holy One of Israel, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, the, the God of the whole earth is he called. That was in Isaiah 54, verse 4 or 5, something like that. Verse 5, thank you. And then if he continued to, 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 to talk to the eunuch, he no doubt went to Isaiah 50, if he got that for 55. And verse number 6, the eunuch began to perk up. You can see it. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Uh -huh. Let the wicked forsake his way, yeah. the unrighteous man his thought, uh -huh. and let him return unto the Lord, and he shall abundantly pardon. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, yeah. so is his thoughts and your thoughts, and his ways and your ways. Uh -huh. But the eunuch probably began to feel a little bit better about himself. Yeah. And then if Philip got over into chapter 56 of the book of Isaiah, and I'm going to turn there. The Bible says in chapter 56 and the latter part of verse number 3, it says, let the eunuch say no more. Behold, I am a dry tree. And you can imagine how he must have felt. I am no longer... Uh, irrelevant. Well. I am no longer less than a man. The God of heaven has made provision even for me. That's what he'd been seeking all the time. All right. By going up to Jerusalem, he probably had been reading the law, mm -hmm. and he knew what the law had said. Well. But then he said, let the eunuch say no more. Behold, I'm a dry tree. For yeah. well, thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath. Lord, he probably could say, I have been keeping your Sabbath. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was going to Jerusalem to worship. Right. Thus said the Lord to the eunuchs that have been keeping my Sabbath and choose the thing that please me right. from his uh, 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 and take hold of my covenant. The eunuch could probably say, that's what my desires have been. That's what I've been, you know, they couldn't send, they could not have sent somebody like the Apostle Paul down there to talk to this man. Right. It had to be somebody like Philip, right. uh, who knew how to handle minority problems, yeah, all right. how to deal with people who were less than people. Uh -huh. And he said, n no doubt he told him, you know, and you can see the eunuch as he began to perk up. 
And, and God said, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And you can see when they came to some water. Usually, you know, when we do personal work, we have to ask the candidate, do you want to be baptized now? But they didn't have to do that with the unit. Right. They came to the water, yeah. and the unit was excited. See, here's water. Yeah. What does it mean Praise to be baptized? Oh, yes, yeah. Praise the Lord. Wait for me to put this next part up there, uh -huh. uh, but that's Junior singing. Right. <laughs> but our next speaker gonna be uh, Ulysses Johnson from the Dallas and College uh, Church of Christ in Colorado City, Texas. 